So look right over here. This is what I was talking about earlier today. This is the sand pond hole. I don't see it. What do you mean you can't see it? Seriously, it right make there, an right enough. Oh, come on, please. Oh, hi, I'm Alex. Uh, no, you know, come on, just look over here. Definitely, this come is on, the sand Dad. Pond give it up. The camera's rolling, and right. we really need to get this promo done. All right. So. I am really excited to introduce you to a new lecture in our catalog of topics. And I'm Alex's dad, sometimes known as Victor. Together, we're going to try to demystify and reveal some of the ways you can tell how old your antique glass bottle just might be. Now, our goal is not to necessarily tell you the value of your bottles in terms of dollars and cents, but rather to make sense of your bottle. So we're going to be asking 17 questions to help walk you through a journey to better understand what to know and what to look for when purchasing bottles at an antique store, flea market, bottle show, or a yard sale. These questions were actually formulated by the Society for Historic Archaeology along with help from the Bureau of Land Management. Their webpage is an amazing source of information and I would heartily recommend it to everyone. Warning, this is a very dense web page with lots of information and great pictures. If you find our lecture informative and hopefully inspiring, we would encourage you to follow up with their web page. So, we are not here to say your bottle is worth $2,000. We are here instead to help you learn how to ask the right questions. And inform you to what to know and what to look for. That's perhaps what I like most about PBS's series Antiques Roadshow. The information along with some of the characters who appraise those gems. I love it when Nicholas Lowry breaks down the different parts of a poster to let you know why it's valuable. Or why it's a cheap fake. Or who isn't entertained watching the Kino brothers, Leslie and Lee, as they explain about secondary woods, finials, and wooden inlays. And then there's pottery experts Suzanne Peralt and David Rago. Watch them sigh with exasperation, explaining why keys and loose change ought not to be stored in that valuable ancient Chinese jade bowl. So, with the help of our friends from the Society for Historic Archaeology, and uh, along with the Bureau of Land Management, we'll dig in and untangle some of the mysteries you might face in getting to know your antique bottles better. Alex and I will be sharing a very large, eclectic, and varied collection of bottles to best demonstrate what to look for. They'll be organized in a way that will accompany the list of questions that everyone will be provided for at the lecture. Along with pertinent illustrations and a glossary of terms. And if at any point in our discussions you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand. We find these types of lectures and meetings so much more exciting and informative when everyone is not just listening, but asking questions and contributing ideas. So contact us and book us for your next public meeting. So seriously, how can you not see that this is a sand pond? All right, Dad, I'm done. I can't take this conversation about pontos anymore. Well, I'm definitely going to catalog this I'm as leaving. A I mean, I just don't know why you can't see it. But seriously, if you look carefully, 